What is up, guys? We are live here with Pro Play Games with a brand new set 10 deck. Yes, it is Soul Striker, but there's a catch to it. This is the brand new promo rebooted Soul Striker leader, the one that you were only able to get at your local game store. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. But before we start, don't forget, use the TCG Player link affiliate down in the description below in order to shop your favorite Dragon Ball Super products at the lowest prices. I guarantee you, you're not gonna find anything lower than tcgplayer.com. Shop from the cheapest sellers in the world or your favorite local game store and show them support during this time. Now, Soul Striker. It did get a reboot. It won the contest for getting a reboot and Bandai was able to pretty much give this as a promotional card for anybody who purchased set 10 at their local game store or participated in the pre-release. So if you were lucky enough to have your local game shop open, you have been able to get your hands on these. If not, like I said, you can get them on tcgplayer.com. But Super Saiyan God Son Goku, they did a small little rod on the front here. It's gonna give you an option when it when this card attacks, choose one, draw one card or choose one of your mono blue energy and switch it to active mode. Before you could only switch to mono blue. Um, or the blue energy to active mode, not mono blue. So uh, small little restriction on the untapping, but also uh, the choice between the draw is huge because this deck was not looked at for a while because it wasn't able to draw uh, or keep up that advantage early game before it got to the back. And, and the back was still fantastic, but uh, the Awaken here is four or less. Uh, or, or if you have a unison with cost three in play, which they made a specific unison with uh, for this deck, you'll see in a little bit you may draw two cards and flip this card over so even if you get stalled out you can awaken at eight this is a very very huge upgrade for soul striker not having to be at four to awaken uh and this deck can easily awaken at um eight just by playing that unison on turn three now backside here and this is where the artwork is really really beautiful look at that uh, it's got the nice little shenron dragon in the back and very cool effect uh it is the same name plus reborn at the, at the at the end of it so soul striker reborn uh when this card attacks draw one then switch up to two of your mono blue of course specifying again mono blue here as opposed to the other uh former leader that this one uh could untap multicolor but um not a big deal as this gains an additional auto in the back at the end of your turn choose up to one of your blue unison cards and switch to active mode now you, you say uh what, what's the purpose of that because unison cards can be attacked in, in in rest or in active uh they're kind of like a leader so um wh what's the benefit of that well you'll see once we get to the unison card all right so that's the leader then the unison right here this is what makes the dragon right here in the background and by the way guys this is going to be a giveaway for all our patreon members make sure you guys subscribe to the patreon down in the description below for more competitive content we have a lot of deck profiles on there a lot more than what we post on youtube i guarantee it if you want to take dragon ball super seriously and you want some competitive builds make sure you check it out all you have to be is a dollar minimum subscriber so if you're a ten dollar subscriber or five dollar subscriber dollar subscriber you're qualified regardless you just have to be a subscriber we'll be doing the giveaway on patreon guys okay so make sure you check out the patreon now's no better time we're going to be doing some battle series with peter katani it's going to be really really fun especially with all these brand new strategies we have like seven decks built in person can't wait to test them out so uh without further ado the ss goku black unison of extermination that's going to be your go-to unison in this deck. We are playing another unison, but this is the main one that you want because it has a specified cost of three up here. You're going to be able to see that. And that's what you need to awaken. That's what you need. To, that's what Soul Striker needs to see to awaken on that turn three. And this one's actually pretty unique because it is a blocker. Um, and it does have an auto when it's switched to active mode by your leader card skill, add a marker to this card. So as you can see, the, the actual unison itself doesn't have a way of ticking up its markers. So it's always going to start off with three and stay at three unless you minus two it. But because of the leader, um, the awaken leader, and obviously it's always going to be awakened when you have the unison out, uh, it's going to be be able to untap it and always add a counter. So you're always going to add a counter uh, as well as doing the zero or the minus two uh, for the turn. So that's really, really cool. 
Uh, now it is a blocker, so um, as long as it's in active mode, it can actually block an attack. Um, and that's great because there's some times that you just don't want to take an attack and you rather just take a marker off the unison instead of defending your life. So that's cool. Uh, the plus or minus zero. So that means no changes to the markers. Activate main, one, uh, draw a card, choose one card in your hand, discard it. So very cool if you're playing cards that you want in the drop area, fill up your drop area for your big bombs, uh, anything like that. Just cycling regardless. Like you're not losing any type of advantage. You're just pitching, pitching a card that might be better in late game for a, a, be a better card in your current scenario. So that's always good. It's a very safe ability. Uh, nothing too broken. But it's minus two is actually really good because blue normally doesn't have a lot of removal. Now this doesn't get around barrier, but it's still excellent. It doesn't take away from the fact of how good this card is. Uh, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of four or less and place it at the bottom of the owner's deck. So that's very good because as you know, there's a lot of graveyard or drop area centric strategies out there. So being putting it back into the opponent's deck is great. The chances of them redrawing it is very low, but um, it won't trigger any like when destroyed or whatever abilities. It will trigger the when this card is left from the battlefield, but regardless, uh, this card is great for what it is. For three energy being a unison that can attack, defend, uh, uptake automatically, and be able to uh, cycle through and give you removal, it's literally one of the best unison. I, I definitely rank it up there. It's just that it's limited pretty much to this leader to make it um, very competitive. So very cool um so we actually play the coming soon variant i just wanted to get uh you guys to see that version right there um but i play the coming soon variant. i don't know i'm torn between both i, I like them uh, both a lot but we definitely play four copies of this monster um and we're playing the hot stamped right there the new series these are a little bit i guess harder to come by um since they were a little bit older and you can only get them from the uh expansions behind the expansions so Next is going to be, uh, now I know I'm probably going to, you know, uh, get a lot of dislikes on this, but um, now you can replace this if you want for not even a scratch, but obviously this card is much better in the deck. Um, this is as competitive as it can get. I'm sorry guys, I normally post a more casual budget friendly stuff on YouTube, but I, I just wanted to give you guys a taste of what to expect on the Patreon. Uh, for uh, Great Ape, Sun Goku, Saiyan Instincts, now this card is getting reprinted in the, in the, um, in the event pack so so it will drop in price for sure who knows how cheap but this card is is extremely good because uh for two it just from the drop area to your warp you can draw two cards now um what's really cool is that remember your unison is going to be pitching a card to the drop area so pitching this ape is going to be fantastic and we do play a small little uh yellow package this is not a complete uh mono blue deck uh so you'll see in a little bit here that um you know it it does benefit by having a yellow card that you can combo with in the deck uh next for the unisons actually is uh ss gotenks absolute unison so this guy is actually insane like if you guys have not read this guy or not acknowledged uh how good he is definitely pick up your copies while they're cheap this is a dual attacking blocker for four energy with a 20k base so it's a very big unison your opponent has to trade up to 20 so even if they attack with their leader they have to combo five to successfully deal damage to this guy he comes out with four uh he only has two minus abilities but that's fine because effectively you can minus two it twice to draw four cards you know between turn one and turn two of you playing it um or you can just uh go for a big minus three and then let your and then use it as a blocker to to uh, you know effectivize uh his last um his last pretty much use so the cool thing about him is that he's a dual attacker too so he's going to put pressure twice or he's going to be able to put pressure once and then restand defensively as a blocker and, and 20k blockers are, are great and being able to have it in the form of unison that's already giving you advantage is fantastic and remember it's minus three gets around barrier so between go tanks and uh your unison of extermination and goku black both of these unisons give you some iteration of removal which is great on top of both of them giving you uh, drawing capabilities or cycling uh, capabilities or, or digging capabilities right you're seeing more cards with both of these unisons one of their abilities and then you're getting more removal with both uh unisons um minus abilities which is phew, hands down fantastic so we only play two of him because we always really want to have the unison of extermination out but think to note that your soul striker can untap your go tanks as well it can untap any unison um and, and switch to active mode so that's very very important next card we play here is um hit deadly vanguard 
Now, Hit the Deadly Vanguard is um, not 100% necessary in the deck. This is a draft box card, so it probably will run you, you know, about $20 a piece, which is obviously not the cheapest. Um, this is not 100% required, but I feel like if you have it, you definitely play it. Uh, I like playing it because there's so many, like, there's not many decks that Hit can really fit into, and this is probably, like, if it doesn't fit into this deck, it doesn't fit into almost any deck. So really um this is the deck that take it, uh, could take advantage of it most because you can keep up three energy um all you have to do is keep up one energy and then attack with soul striker and then that automatically untaps you two and then you have three right there so that's pretty simple and then you have other ways of using your energy defensively to the point where you don't telegraph this card 100 percent so this card can be very devastating against the right deck and it's just um it's solid you know it's a 15k you can put on pressure after you play it it get rid, uh, gets rid of two different threats and it helps with the tempo of the deck because you do have other cards in the deck that you're going to see in a little bit that um will help you with your tempo and if you get to resolve um you know these back to back on different turns along with the other card that i'm going to show you you'll you'll really be in a winning position um, while putting pressure on your opponent because they're not going to be able to put pressure on your unisons. So speaking about the other card that we were talking about, uh, we're playing four of the SS Trunks God Sealing Technique. So the God Sealing Technique is very similar to the hit in the way that it, it actually does, you know, it bounces back to your opponent's hand. Well, this one's a little bit better. Uh, it is a little bit more, um, I, I guess, uh, situational because you do need to control a unison out with at least two markers. So the good thing about this is that the Goku Black is always gonna have four on your opponent's turn as long as you don't slam it down with the minus two. And uh, your opponent would have to commit three attacks to the Goku Black before playing a battle card to get around your SS Trunks. Uh, and then your Gotenks always comes out with a lot of counters anyways. Um, and if you minus two it, I mean, they have to go into it and trade into the 20K uh, to get it down to minus, um, lower than two counters. So uh, to get this SS Trunks offline, it, it's pretty difficult in this deck for your opponent to do. So that makes this card even better. And then this is kind of like a hit, but has no restriction. Like your opponent can play a literal 10 drop Black Smoke Dragon and you can SS Trunks God Ceiling Technique it away and it will go back to your opponent's hand. So they use all that energy for nothing and all you had to do is discard this card from your hand. So this card, uh, I think hands down, is the best uh, free counterplay unison, uh, counterplay battle card from uh, Series 10. Uh, and you know that's why we're maxing out on it so this and hit you know back-to-back -back turns can be extremely devastating for your opponent because they never feel safe they can never get uh, momentum going they can never get um, you know cards successfully on the board and that could be extremely frustrating and can win you a game uh, easily next is going to be uh, for some of the negates we have master Roshi universe 7 United this is the just good old one energy uh, blocker I mean negate and this guy not only gives you a negate but it also gives you a body on board so you'll be able to uh combo it away afterwards what i like about this card too is that um i mean this is going to be replaced by the tp trunks once the tp trunks comes out in the in, in the new tournament packs for series 10 there's a trunks that acts kind of like a topo as long as you have a unison on board so you're definitely going to want to replace him when you do get that trunks because that trunks will come down for one energy as well as long as you have a unison uh and it's just it just outvalues this card on every uh, spectrum as long as you're you know utilizing the unison mechanic so uh, for now we're playing the master roshi universe 7 united but of course as you get your hands on those trunks definitely throw them in there uh, wait until they cool down in price. I'm sure a lot of them are going to be out there on the market. So till then, you can just use this Master Roshi uh, Universe 7 United. And then speaking about negates, of course, what is the uh, what is a blue deck without the best negate? Uh, blue negate in the entire game. We have D Magic as a four of here, and uh, not much to say. I mean, for blue, it untaps two blue energy uh, on the play, so you can go ahead and pay the one uh, blue untap two this doesn't have to be monocolor energy by the way the leader can only untap mono blue energy this can untap your uh, multicolor energy uh, so that's really really good next for the one drops is east kai keeping watch now i like this card this can be pretty much any cantrip and cantrip is any card that really you play and you draw a card uh, so effectively this can be the supreme kai blocker as well but the reason why I like the East Kai is because one, it's in blue, so I can charge it, um, and I can untap it with my Soul Striker leader if I needed to, you know, um, because remember, this is pretty much a mono blue deck. 
So it's on color, draws you the card, and then um, it, this is great against any any opponent playing like a rival strategies or uh, just Grade Eight Bardock. Grade Eight Bardock is something that can be devastating if your opponent plays it on you defensively, and this kind of mitigates them from doing that because it takes away that advantage. Uh, they can still play through this, but they will, uh, you know, have to lose the card, which is the card that they gain from playing the Bardock. So. It's not going to say, hey, you know, they can't play it anymore, but it will make them rethink it for sure. And then, of course, uh, well, not of course, but this was kind of like a last minute addition. It's great because it's one energy draw card, so it's kind of like the um, the East Kai that we just showed. But this can be used in, in, in combo to help you get out of, like, strange numbers. So um, the, the 10K... Uh, boost and combo power can help you as like additional super combos in a way and this is you think of this as just a super combo that draws you a card remember you're untapping two energy with that soul striker if you want to keep up uh, any type of counter plays or the hit deadly vanguard or things like that you're going to want to have uh, other cards to use with your energy just in case your opponent telegraphs you having those type of things so it makes it difficult for them to really effectively have a line of play that's effective to you know the turn itself and using their energy so this is just one of those cards that helps you not only cycle and find the cards that you need because you really need that unison on turn three um, but uh, regardless it's just something that gives you uh, additional combo power either offensively or defensively while giving you that draw if there was a blue version of this card we would play it but there's only a blue there's only a green which is this one and the red which is the unbreakable son goku and this is the only one that comes uh, level two judge foil so <laughs> uh, pretty easy decision there right uh, next is going to be for the one drops. We're still on the one drops, by the way, guys. Um, we play Ultra Instinct, Goku's uh, Kamehameha, of course, Soul Striker. We got Goku right there in the picture. What is a deck without uh, the Ultra Instinct Kamehameha here? And this used to be a four of, but honestly, um, between this card and the Infernal Villainy Cell, they kind of do the same thing. This one, on the offense, you can draw a card. But on defense, it untaps you in energy, which can be good and bad. I mean, honestly, this deck doesn't have too many things to do with that untapped energy. So um, it, it's great because it helps you hit numbers. For one energy, you get 15k combo power with the Inferno Villainy Cell. You get 10k for one energy, but you draw a card regardless. This one, we won't draw a card defensively. So this is the one that you're going to want to use offensively if you really need to push through some damage and get those big numbers. Uh, and then the Inferno Villainy Cell, you're probably going to want to use defensively. And it, and it really just does matter if you want to keep that energy up or not. But the 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 thing is that this card because you're always going to have uh, all blue energy um the the 15k is pretty relevant it's just an extra card sometimes if you see it you know because think about it sometimes we'll use the infernal villain you sell and a 5k and then with this card you're just using one card so even if it doesn't draw you a card defensively it can potentially draw you a card sometimes so uh you can play more copies of this if you like but uh we went with two then for the two drops, we have Dispo, Sonic Subprovision. And I think this is a card that's drastically undervalued right now. Um, Shin Shenron is going to be a huge deck as well as any type of a rival strategy and being able to uh, just lay down those extremely big, tough dudes, like cheating them out. And Shin Shenron is known for bringing out its nine drop on like turn three, turn four or something like that. So having a Dispo Sonic Subprovision is extremely good because not only uh, will it help self awaken you because against those decks they really just don't do anything they don't attack your life or do anything so being able to take a, da uh, a damage from your life and adding it to your hand as well as removing that threat from the board uh, can be extremely vital as well as Dispo having the little claws on there when this card is removed from the battle area by your opponent's skill or KO'd, draw a card. So if they try to attack into it or try to board wipe it or remove it, you're going to be able to draw that card back immediately. Uh, and it's something that really fills in that, because um, you have a lot of one drops. So it's a very cheap deck, honestly. You're not playing a lot of big bombs and things like that. It's a very resource-y uh, deck. So the Dispo fits in really perfectly. And if you have a fourth, I would probably fit in a fourth, maybe at least in the sideboard, because in the matchups that is good, it's really good. And it's surprising in how many matchups that this card has actually um you know been able to do things now the next card that we play here and this is probably your win condition remember you're not playing any big bombs this is just a very resource resource um 
managing that like it has very good resource management and all you want to do is outvalue your opponent with a bunch of 15k attackers so a boonie is nothing better uh, right now blue has um, their trump card which is a boonie and that card there's not really an easier effective way to uh, stop an obuni attack obuni is always going to come in there uh, produce you four attacks for four energy and they're all going to be mi minimum 15k and then provide you an untap uh, if you're lucky honestly it's like a 70 percent chance that you'll get that untap but regardless your opponent has to pitch a card for each attack if they don't want to take it and that's big because if you look at it then obuni is really just like pay for energy for your opponent to discard you know four cards minimum so very powerful this is one of your closers you want to see it this is why you play four because you want to play boom right on turn four you want to slam this guy down and then on turn five you want to hit him up with another obuni uh back to back so um extremely powerful card has deflect so your opponent's not going to be able to do anything about it uh they can do something to the tokens that come in but regardless the pressure is very big and there's not many decks right now that can board wipe um and take away that pressure Next for the super combo is going to be Fused Zamasu, Sacred Disbelief. Now, I was playing Zeno, um, if you remember from the first Patreon uh, video of the Soul Striker, and it was working out really well for me, but as you can see, this build's a little bit different. Uh, and we did uh, decide to include a small little splash of this multicolor package, this yellow package, in order to give us access to one of the best cards in the game. And one of those is Zamasu here. Zamasu being able to help you against a very aggressive strategies, uh, even against not st defensive strategies, being able to tap down a Shin Shenron or one of their big blockers or just tapping down one of their extra combo powers. Uh, Zamasu can act as like a 0 plus 15 or a 0 plus 20 in some cases because even if you're tapping down one of your opponent's potential combo you're able to kind of push a little bit harder uh so samasu sacred Dib disbelief while it doesn't give you any card advantage like zeno does and i really like that from the zeno uh this does uh, also fill the role of being a uh, multicolor card um blue yellow in particular to help us round out the splash of the package which is uh, sun goku and hit supreme alliance now this is hands down i think one of the best cards in the game um <laughs> honestly for one blue it comes out um it has uh you know the arrival so you need to have the blue and yellow which is why we're playing the goku ape remember because now you can just combo a, a mono blue card and the ape and bring out the sun goku and hit supreme alliance instead of just relying on that fuse Masu super combo like you would normally um so this card it has an activate battle once per turn if your leader card is blue or yellow switch this card to active mode so this card um, when it comes down you can attack your opponent in the middle of that combat you can activate uh, battle is ability switch it back to active mode and then attack your opponent again so this card uh, for 19k is going to give you two attacks so you can imagine this alongside a boonie that's six attacks minimum and then this activate battle also works on your opponent's turn so if your opponent tries attacking this hit or your opponent tries attacking any card during that battle you can switch this guy to active mode and become now he becomes a blocker because now he's blocking you'll normally use this guy offensively but being able to bring him back as a blocker potentially twice because this guy can come back as a blocker block a 15k if your opponent doesn't combo into it or if they do and you combo out of it and it survives um you know it's just uh well you can't coming out as uh, a defensive blocker as well is, is huge because after you've been able to exhaust two attacks being able to restand as that final blocker or or maybe just get it out of harm's way it is great because now your opponent really has to deal with two more attacks on on the following turn and it's going to be extremely hard um then resource wise to deal with the boonies and this uh dual attacking i guess you can call it uh sun goku and hit and the 19k is great um they did uh if this would have been 20k it would have been really really insane but anyways now for the secret rares we're playing two secret rares in the deck and i know you can only play one per deck but we're playing uh Fu shrouded in mystery which is hands down a secret rare i don't care what anybody says um this card of course as you know at war this deck has no uh, graveyard reliance really the, the only thing that you really care to have in your drop area is your son goku ape 
Uh, other than that, it doesn't really play off the drop area as well um, at all, which is why we haven't seen a lot of overrun uh, decks or strategies or cards because a lot of decks like manipulating that drop area um, by using cards, recurring cards from there. This deck doesn't really care about it at all, and that's what makes it uh, a perfect candidate for using a big overrun uh, card to seal the game, and Foo's exactly that. Um, you know, this can be followed uh, with the outstanding board pressure that the deck has with Obuni and the Sun Goku and Hit Supreme Alliance uh, to really close out a game miraculously uh, and, and flawlessly. So, Fu Shadow and Mystery definitely our one and only overwhelm in the entire deck. And then our second secret rare. Now, this was Gogeta. We do have the Gogeta, but after playing with the Gogeta, and realizing that you can't combo with cards on board and you can't play additional battle cards afterwards that restriction actually in game um cost us really big <laughs> so we decided to switch back over to black smoke dragon smoky dragon is um definitely the, the chances of you playing both these secret rares in the same game are very low you just want to play two secret rares so you for sure at least see one so I know that if you play the Fu, the Black Smoke is probably never going to come down. And um, you can play the Black Smoke and then the Fu afterwards. So so depending on you know whether you see them both first in the first place, which is highly unlikely, you can actually sequence them both out. Um, but uh, you know obviously the Black Smoke requires uh, X amount of cards in your drop area. So you're going to want to play that Black Smoke first if you see it. But yeah, either or, whichever one you see first, usually should be enough to close out the game. Black Smoke is just Black Smoke at the end of the day. Uh, it is it is vulnerable to your opponent playing uh, God Sealing Technique. That's the big thing. Other than that, um, you know, if your opponent has it, you just got to play around it smartly. And, and because you have a lot of you have a lot of pressure on board, you're able to actually take off counters from their unison. Uh, before even spending energy for a battle card so it, it's still not even an issue but that's the only thing that made black smoke not as good as it was it's only really good now in decks that can apply pressure on board without having to spend a lot of energy on their boss card um so yeah that pretty much rounds out the deck it's it's very very good uh definitely something that um i guess you can call you know quote unquote budget because it doesn't require championship pack cards it doesn't require tournament pack cards so if you want to be competitive within being in a budget i think this is a great deck for you especially post saiyan instincts reprint and yeah i, I really have a genuinely fun time playing this leader it's very very good once again guys if you did enjoy the deck profile please make sure you check out that patreon in the description down below uh, helping us continue to produce dragon ball super content at a competitive level for you guys um, as well as, you know, showing you the latest strategies and, you know, top decks of the meta. So thank you guys again for watching. Till next time, we're out.